aerial view of the Great Lakes, map of islands. Some say that Michigan's South Manitou Island is like an artist's palette, the thumbhole, the island's deep natural harbor. Certainly on a cloudless day, this island, part of Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, glows with a unique palette of color and texture worthy of a great work of art, a landscape composed of unique natural and cultural features and stories. Come with us now to visit some of the island's special places. The Arrowhead Emblem of the National Park Service. Words read, South Manitou Island, wreck of the Francisco Morazan. Hi, I'm Matt Mormon, an interpretive ranger at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. I'm on South Manitou Island today to share with you one of its unique stories. The bluff I'm standing on looks south over Lake Michigan's Manitou Passage, and below us is what's left of the wreck of the freighter Francisco Morazan. My first career was a U.S. Coast Guard helicopter pilot. I flew for 15 years and was stationed in Traverse City for five of those. I flew over the Manitou Passage in all types of weather conditions, including those similar to what the crew of the Francisco Morazan was experiencing that night. Heavy seas, high winds, blinding snow. Right over there you can see Sleeping Bear Dunes and Platte Bay, and to the north is Sleeping Bear Point and the North Manitou Shoals Lighthouse, also known as the Crib. The South Mantu Lighthouse is almost three miles north along this shore, but out of sight from here. This 234-foot steel freighter ran aground on this site on November 29, 1960. The Morazan is what we call on the Great Lakes a Salty, an ocean freighter. She was launched in 22 in Hamburg, Germany, had a long career as a commercial vessel, running under 11 different owners, including Nazi Germany, Britain, and Norway. The Morazan's master was 24-year-old Greek captain Eduardo Trevisas. Also aboard was an international crew of 12, plus the captain's pregnant wife. November is the end of the shipping season on the Great Lakes. The Morazan was attempting to make it through the lakes to the St. Lawrence Seaway prior to its closing, only days away. This may be why he's pressing through this difficult weather. At 3 a.m. on November 27th, the Morazan cleared the outer buoy in Chicago. Three hours later, she ran into heavy fog and reduced speed. At 6.30 a.m., the Morazan's fuel pump malfunctioned. She stopped and drifted for eight hours while engineers made repairs. When she was underway again, snow squalls had reduced visibility to zero. Winds had picked up from the southeast, her decks were awash, and she was rolling heavily as she steamed north. The Morazan rounded Point Betsy, 10 miles to the south. The problem was the captain didn't know his exact position. He began a series of course corrections to safely get around the west side of the Manitou Islands, but he ended up running aground right here. Points to the water. From the ship's log and the Coast Guard investigation, we know most of the details. Highlighted words read, we are aground. In fact, the Morazan plowed right over the remains of the steamer Walter Frost that had wrecked on this exact site 57 years earlier. Captain Trevisas tried to back the ship off the shoal, but that failed. He initiated a call of the Coast Guard. The storm continued to pummel the ship. The captain and crew ended up staying on board until the insurers arrived. They determined the cargo of the Morazan could be salvaged, but not the ship itself. Two tugs and a barge came over from Sturgeon Bay across Lake Michigan. Their efforts became futile when the weather turned nasty again, and the Morazan in this exposed location was pushed farther up the shoal. Six days after the Morazan went aground, the first salvage operations were abandoned. The rest of the crew, including the ship's cap, were taken off. The salvage contract was then awarded to a local company. They managed to take off some of the canned chicken and cow hides before storms again halted the work. As a result, chicken, toy balsa wood airplanes were enjoyed by many who later visited the wreck. The beach was also strewn with empty plastic suave hairdressing bottles. Over the next years, Morazan became a popular site for locals, divers, and boaters who helped themselves to the cargo and fittings. Since 1995, the Morazan has been protected as part of the Mantu Passage State Underwater Preserve. A piece of the hull sits in the water, birds on top. Five decades of waves and ice have continued to damage the weakened hull. Jutting out of the water, the open hull. The hulk of the Francisco Morazan still rises above the waves that wash the south shore of South Manitou Island, stands as a visible reminder of all the boats that met their fate in the Manitou Passage, and the awesome power of the force of nature. On the horizon, the shipwreck. The Arrowhead, emblem of the National Park Service.